a couple years ago, we were in the movie theaters. We were having a great time with the culmination of 10 years of Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. That has gone away now. And we've been kind of a little empty without all the great Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. But boy, two years ago, we were ending off with Avengers Endgame and Spider-Man. Today would be the time that we would be celebrating having a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie kind of start the official season of spring summer movies. What happened is on May 3rd, we got a very big announcement of the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. There is so much to cover that this episode, part one of A Marvelous Time, we are just going to talk about just the movies for the Marvel movies that are coming out from this year on. So sit back, relax, fill up your favorite popcorn bowl and your favorite drink and get ready to watch Delve Live. Welcome to Delve Live. I'm Tom Morris. As I was talking about, a couple years ago, we had just wrapped up Avengers Endgame, the culmination of 10 years worth of something that has tried to be done, but not to that scale. And I don't think will ever be duplicated ever since. Just think about it. When you were sitting in the movie theater from the first Iron Man all the way to the snap, there has been so many great moments of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. A couple days ago, they just announced that their whole slate of MCU movies from now until 2023, we just got finally kind of a sample of what's going on with the MCU. So this episode, we are going to talk about just the movie side of what's coming out. If you haven't subscribed before, make sure you tell your friends about Delve Live, the show where we cover pop culture. You can find us on Facebook. YouTube, and Instagram. When you talk about Marvel, you talk about generations reading the comic books, the cartoons, the action figures. We finally got the Marvel Cinematic Universe where it was cool to wear your Captain America t-shirt or your Black Panther t-shirt, or if people wanted to be Black Widow, whoever you wanted you could relate with, it was cool to finally say, hey, I followed comic books since I was a little kid. I want to give credit to the article that I'm referencing here about the movie plots and synopsis. Uh, uh, was published on May 3rd on Marvel.com. was Marvel Studios Celebrates the Movies. The Marvel Cinematic Universe, their roadmap for Phase 4 and beyond. They have a bunch of movies, three movies coming out this year, and we're going to talk about them and also what is in the pipeline. So the first movie that we're going to talk about it's, of course, the one that's been delayed since 2020, and that's Black Widow. You don't know everything about me. I've lived a lot of lives before I was an Avenger, before I got this family. I made mistakes choosing between what the world wants you to be. And who you are. We have to go back to where it all started. Where did you think I was all this time? We have unfinished business. My girls are the toughest girls in the world. I'm sorry. We had our orders and we played our roles. It wasn't real. It was real to me. To me, you were everything. She's such a mom. One thing's for sure. 
I'm done running from my past. Let me give you a little synopsis of um, July 9th, what you can expect. This is kind of a prequel before everything started. So Natasha Romanoff, a.k.a. Black Widow, confronts the darker parts of her ledger when a dangerous conspiracy with ties to her past arises. Pursued by a force that will stop at nothing to break her down, Natasha must deal with her history as a spy and the broken relationships left in her wake long before she became an Avenger. Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff, is probably one of the most interesting characters from the MCU. It was very, and let's say that we're going to be spoiling. If you haven't watched anything up to Phase 3, I'm sorry, but <laughs> Natasha Romanoff, Black Widow, she made a, um, a sacrifice, unfortunately, and I don't think we'll be seeing her character forward. So this movie kind of ties up a fond farewell for the Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff. The next movie that we're going to see September 3rd, 2021, is Ch uh, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I'm going to play a clip for you for that, too, the trailer. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings stars Simu Liu, and I am sorry if I mispronounced the names, as Shang-Chi, who must confront the past he thought he left behind when he is drawn into the web of the mysterious Ten Rings organization. The film also stars Tony Yulung as Wing Wu, um, and I cannot pronounce these names, um, Shang-Chi's friends Katie and Michelle Yeo as Jing Nan. Yes, I am not able to pronounce any of these names, and I apologize. Um, but the, definitely, this is going to be, we haven't really seen a kung fu action movie from the MCU. We've kind of seen some cool stuff. But this is going to be really cool because it might tie into Iron Man 3 in a kind of a way with the Ten Rings organization. The final movie that will be out in 2021 is The Eternals, featuring an exciting new team of superheroes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Ancient beings who have been living on Earth in secret for thousands of years. Following the events of Avengers Endgame, an unexpected tragedy forces them out of the shadows to reunite against mankind's most ancient enemy, the Deviants. This was all part of a press release, like I said, but the biggest, the coolest thing was this video celebrating the movies and what has come before, what has been here, 
in what's a glimpse of what's to come. I love being with people. It's the most incredible thing in the world. What are you doing? Oh, this is nice. That world may change and evolve, but the one thing that will never change, we're all part of one big family. your brother that woman over there she's your sister higher further faster baby that's right we're all part of one universe Wakanda forever! that moves ever upward and onward to greater glory That doesn't give you goosebumps hearing that music again. Whew, wow, that was awesome. I've watched that uh, kind of spot a few times actually, just reliving. How many of you in the movie theater or when you're watching when Captain America says Avengers assemble? To me, that was the culmination of everything that has been awesome about these movies. Finally, you as a kid, if you were a Marvel fan or if you didn't even watch, but you kind of knew who the Avengers were, you haven't heard that call phrase, that catchphrase. And finally hearing that on the big screen, I cheered. I was excited. I don't know about you, but that was one of my favorite moments. Now let's go into what are we going to have for the rest? And I'm going to bring out some dates and we're going to go through these really quick. November 5th of this year will be The Eternals. Then on December 17th, the week before Christmas, we're going to have Spider-Man No Way Home. And it's going to have, of course, Tom Holland, Zendaya, and Jacob Batalon in the follow-up film. There might be some multiverse ramifications with this movie. They've been very coy, very to the vest on what they're going to have in this movie, but it might relate to the next movie after that, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And then now we're getting into 2022. Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange is coming back. We have Benedict Wong as Wong, Rachel McAdams as Christine Palmer, and Chiu Ito 
Ejul 4, sorry I mispronounced her name, is Mordor, as well as the addition of Elizabeth Olsen, the Scarlet Witch. Newcomer, I cannot pronounce the name, last name's Gomez, who will portray America Chavez, a new fan favorite from the comics. If you're not familiar with the multiverse, is is when there's many uh, different Earths and they all have different um, versions of the characters. That's the biggest thing I can wrap it up. We might see a little bit of Spider-Man and Doctor Strange kind of tying in. That will be very interesting. The next one after that, Thor, Love and Thunder, May 6, 2022. We've got Thor. Christian Bale is going to join the cast as Gore, the God Butcher. We've got Natalie Portman returning as Jane Foster and Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie. I've been hearing rumors that some people have been saying the director that Thor Love and Thunder might be one of the best movies in the Marvel MCU to date. And that's saying something. Then we get to Black Panther Wakanda Forever, July 8th, 2022. We're going to explore the world of Wakanda and passing of the actor who played T'Challa. This is going to be a very interesting movie, to say the least. They just announced what the name of this is, of course, Wakanda Forever. November 11th, 2022, we have Captain Marvel 2, which is now called The Marvels. Brie Larson reprising her role as Captain Marvel. We also have uh, Tiana Paris as Monica Rambeau and Eamon Bellany as Kamala Khan. That's going to wrap up 2022. Then we go into 2023. This should be a very fun movie. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Quantum Mania. February 17, 2023. Paul Rudd come back as Ant-Man. Avageline Lilly as Wasp. They're also going to have Kang the Conqueror, played by Jonathan Majors. And Peyton Reed returns to direct the Marvel Studios film. Catherine Newton joins the cast as Casey Lang. While Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer return as Hope's parents, Dr. Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne, respectively. That is going to be, I think, a very fun one. The Ant-Man character just makes me laugh. Paul Rudd plays him very well. Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I know someone in the chat will be, I am grouped. The ragtag bunch of Marvel space misfits will return as uh, James Gunn is penning and directing the third film in the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. Then we have the big question mark. Fantastic Four. That will be out sometime. Just the question is when. Marvel has three um, three unannounced movie titles that they have dates for. And you can assume that it's going to be in 2022 and 2023. I um, had this downloaded. If we assume one is Fantastic Four, what would the other two be? And I would imagine they haven't announced them yet because they... Maybe a spoiler for something that's going to happen. The future of the MCU with just the movie side is going to be phenomenal. I'm looking forward to that. And this brings us to Dell's pop question of the day. What is your favorite MCU movie? Who is your favorite MCU character? What are your favorite moments from the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies? Put that in the chat comments. We'll get to those here shortly. Let's see what we got in the chat here. Thank you for the comments, Hair Razor. Hope you're watching it. Hope you're enjoying so far. Got a few kinks to work out, but I am on top of it. Johnny, I met him through Ecamm Live. Thank you for the compliment. Hopefully you are getting your stuff uh, fixed for your stream. Hi, hi. Uh, Black Widow coming out on my birthday. Well, you know what that means, then. If it's coming out on your birthday, we're going to have to do something. Definitely. Josh, still can't believe Shang-Chi and the Eternals are getting movies. I never expected either one of them to be on the big screen, and I love it. That's, that's true. Now we're getting to the point where we're getting Marvel characters that necessarily are like, oh, I didn't think they'd ever see that. And that's cool because now the whole universe proper is going to be recognized. I agree with you. You want to watch all of them. Well, you know who your movie partner is on that one. <laughs> I'm waiting for Black Adam. Ah, would that be because The Rock is in Black Adam? And that's actually a DC movie property. But we'll get to those movies here sometime soon. But yeah, I'm looking forward to Black Adam. In one of these episodes, I want to talk about Young Rock. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend Young Rock. 
Thor. <laughs> Thor is going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing Natalie Portman. I'm looking forward to seeing how Thor, kind of like he is the last of the big three main characters. What has life been like for Thor? And is he going to be an Asgardian of the galaxy? That's something to think about as well. Yes, Morbius and the Venom sequel coming from Sony. Um, Morbius just got pushed back again, I think in the 2022. I have to look at the article to make sure, but Morbius did get pushed back. And we still have, yes, the Venom, Let There Be Carnage. We've got Morbius, and then we've got the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movie, the Sony animation movie. So is it part, are those Sony-verse movies part of the Spider-Verse, which is part of the MCU? That's going to be a good question as well. I am Groot. And yes, I am Groot as well. I am Groot. <laughs> Which is your favorite Groot? Teenage Groot? Groot or Baby Groot? Oh, ho, ho. I'm getting called out on this one. You can't make me pick... Um, you can't make us, make us pick favorite. Um, that's not fair at all. I'd have to pick the first Thor film as my favorite since I loved it um, so much. And probably Chris Hemsworth's Thor is my favorite character. He's so great in the part. My favorite moment would probably be the Team Cap versus Team Iron Man on Captain America Civil War. That got the most excited than I um, expected. Yeah, I agree with you. That was something when we finally see the heroes versus heroes. That was, whoa. Whoa. Especially when the movie trailer came out and we saw Spider-Man, Black Panther debut. That should have almost been titled Avengers, but I'm, I understand why they put Captain America, but that could have been an Avengers Civil War movie. Um, I know this isn't what you're talking about, but sometime can you talk about a game it, it takes two? Yeah, I'll look into it. I want to thank everyone for engaging in the chat, in the comment section. Thank you for your patience as I still work out the bugs on this live show. Remember, let everyone know that you can find Delve Live on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram as I start to put different content on each. But the big thing to take away is these Marvel Cinematic Events brings us all together. It gives us something to talk about. It gives us something that we can all have fun with. Have those feel-good moments, whether it's taking your aunt to see Guardians of the Galaxy, I Am Groot, or maybe going with your parents to, they can see all the um, figures on the big screen that they buy you for, or going with your family, or going with a group of friends. Sooner rather than later, in some aspect, we're going to have these events that we can all get together and talk about. My name's Tom Morris. Thank you for watching. And leave your comments on what you've enjoyed. Tell me some more about what you're looking forward to. And we'll talk to you next time.